<laughs> Hi, I'm Knu Lee, CEO and co-founder of GenEdit. Today, I'm going to tell you about the, one of the biggest problems in gene therapy, which is delivery and how we are addressing that challenge. Our mission is to develop innovative new therapy through in vivo targeted delivery of genetic medicine. We are overcoming delivery challenges with our proprietary non biter non-lipid delivery technology. Our platform's name is Nano Galaxy, and I'm going to explain to you how it can solve many of the challenges we are facing. And we are developing pipelines of therapeutic candidates, which are both like fully owned and also partnered. The company was founded in 2016, and it was based on the discoveries made at UC Berkeley. And we have a long history of collaborating with Jennifer Downa and Nirei Murthy, and we have published three of the high-profile nature papers demonstrating that in vivo gene therapy is possible non vitally With those experience, we have built NanoGalaxy platform, and we got the in vivo delivery proof of concept with both IV administration and intrathecal administration. And we have strong IP portfolio. Nine patent families around the delivery technology and the engineering technology. The company raised $34 million from top tier investors, including Sequoia Capital, Eli Lilly, and Data Collective. And we have 32 plus full-time employees, and we are located in South San Francisco with lab space and animal facility. Our leadership team combines experiences in the gene therapy, gene editing, and drug development for rare genetic disorders. With decades of experience, we are trying to solve this challenge and develop noble gene therapy. And our advisors include the pioneers in the field. Conventional delivery technologies have been largely successful. We are seeing fantastic progress with them. And now we are thinking about applying this gene therapy all different parts of the body and cure many different indications. To do that, we are still facing some of the challenges. Can we deliver various different types of the payload beyond the loading capacity? And also, are we able to read those, manufacture, and also deliver beyond deliver? All of these challenges we are trying to solve with Nano Galaxy platform. We are using hydrophilic polymer, and we screen them in systematic manner, and we conduct iterative screening to improve the system. And what's different about it? Hydrophilic system has various more interaction than what lipid can do. And also screening really allow us to get to the organ which was previously unreachable. And there are various types of the payloads we can encapsulate in our polymer nanoparticle system. And also, this fully synthetic system is something we can redose in the body and manufacture. Now I'm going to show you each attribute of the polymer nanoparticle system and the sharing the data that we have generated. First, solving the delivery challenge and going beyond where we can currently go, it requires really diverse structure of the polymers. And to do that, we have optimized chemistry. Small molecule can be conjugated to the terminus of the polymer backbone with one-step chemistry. We use thousands of the small molecule, which means that we can generate thousand different polymer structures. And then we have hundreds of the polymer backbones. And combination of this can make really, really large library. And using this large library, very important step is screening the right polymer for this administration and this cell type. 
We conduct two types of screening. First, we, in the primary cell screening in vitro, and also we conduct rodent screening. From this, we generate the data, cell type specific delivery, and also tissue type specific deliveries there. We know the structure of each polymer. Those polymer structures can be broken into hundreds of different descriptors, and then we have a delivery data. And those database is analyzed computationally. Very simple machine learning suggests us some of the important structure for the immune cell delivery. But some of the factors may not be really needed for the heart delivery. Using those information, we conduct medicinal chemistry and make next generation library. Those second generation library is tested in the mouse system. In the end of this iterative cycles, we get tissue specific polymers. And now I'm gonna start the example with IV administration. And conducting the IV administration, the very first step for us was making a serum stable polymer. After screening hundreds to thousands of the polymer for the serum stability, we have taken the serum stable polymer in the animal. While we screen in vivo, we have found some of the interesting rules, some of the properties, and also Gen 100 polymer was identified. This one was particularly interesting because we did not see any delivery to liver. We saw delivery to the immune system and the lung. And from the property that we have identified, property A, focus library was generated, and from that, we were able to see that we can reduce delivery to the immune system. And when we focus on the property B, we saw the enhancement of delivery to the immune system. This was a very interesting discovery. We can fine tune the delivery based on the polymer structure. And we wanted to answer either it can translate in non-human primate. And so we picked the Gen 100 and 115 system and made in large scale, conducted in many different mouse strain experiment, and then taken it to non-human primate. We delivered GFP mRNA, and after 24 hours of IV administration, we harvested all the organs and conducted depth staining. As a result, what we were able to see that in two of the own target, immune system, lymph node, and the spleen, we were able to see the expression of GFP. And also, the 115 system, which was engineered, shows much higher level of the delivery. And the expression was like kind of very obvious in all different parts of the spleen that we have take, taken a look. And then when we look at all target organs like liver and the lung, we did not observe any delivery there. This was a quite interesting kind of starting point for us. With IV administration, we have run the iterative cycle and was able to identify the immune cell specific delivery. Now I'm gonna tell you the second part of the story, which is intrathecal administration for the CNS delivery. For this type of the administration, first, very first thing that we have done was a primary neuron screening. After the screening, we identified the first generation polymer, which showed very nice distribution and delivery to the spinal cord, but not as much to the brain. And as we iterate the polymers and make the particle more stable in the CSF, we were able to see more delivery to the brain. And under, to understand, this phenomenon will be better. We use the AI9 mouse model. So after delivering the query recombinase, we can turn on the RFP in the specific site where we deliver. In the hind brain, we were able to see very nice and the broad distribution and the delivery of mRNA. And the next, next point that we wanted to address was like either the changing the polymer structure would affect the delivery where we go. And the Gen 152 system is another polymer system. And in this case, we were able to see a bit deeper delivery 
to the midbrain area. And then we stained the brain with the two different markers, new N and also GFAB markers. So with those stain, stainings, we were able to see that both neurons and the astrocyte, we can deliver mRNA to. And the next question is, is it really safe or it doesn't cause any inflammation? And to look at it, we co collected the brain and the from the consecutive sections, the first section was used for the RFP staining with immunohistochemistry, and the second staining was used for the H&E. And we look at three different parts of the brain and then where we could see the delivery, we, and from the H&E staining, we did not see inflammation there. So with these two of the IV and the intradecal, I showed you that can, we can deliver to the CNS and also immune system. We also have other targets that we are showing quite interesting kind of delivery there, which we can disclose next time. And the second attribute I, I want to mention is payload flexibility. And using this system, can, one of the advantage is that we can formulate an aqueous solution, which means that not only nucleic acid, we can deliver protein cargos in our system. And also this is lyophilizable system, which carries some of the advantage. And showing this characteristic further with Gen 115 system, we, show, we deliver various different cargos, starting from very small siRNA to the nine kilo base mRNA, we have efficiently kind of encapsulated, and the right side shows the TEM image of the nanoparticle. Using this particle system, if we deliver to the HEP3B cell and delivering GFP mRNA, we can get 98% of the delivery, and also delivering Cas9 mRNA and also ribonuclear protein, we can get up to 95% of indel frequency there. The third attribute I want to share is about the ability to read those. To test either this is a system we can, can repeat administration, we have designed an experiment. So first three times, we can have a prior administration before the functional CRE delivery. If CRE is delivered and then it can have function, functional delivery, and then we are gonna see the luciferase turn on. So the second group, having the AAB9 delivered only one time, we are able to see beautiful delivery to the liver. But third group, having the prior AAB administration shows no delivery at all. Because of the immunogenicity of AAB, we cannot repeat the administration. But on contrary, our system, Gen 100 system, one-time administration and also fourth time of administration, we were able to see a same level of the delivery. And so it is like quite encouraging that we can repeat the administration, the effect last. And the last attribute I want to introduce is ease of manufacturing. Manufacturing has been a huge challenge in gene therapy field. And our system is chemically synthesizable, scalable manufacturing system. And also formulation is scalable too. As an example, we use Gen 115 system and made five different batches in 300 milligram scale, which is enough to use in 10 non-human primates. Using all those five batches of them, we have administered in the mouse system and tested either we are seeing the similar level of the mRNA delivery with bioluminescence measurement. We are able to see that all five batches of them show quite similar and the reproducible delivery data. And this was a very encouraging result for us. And since then, we have scaled up the synthesis and has made gram scale of the polymers and was able to reproduce the same result. So with this proof of concept delivery, we are developing therapeutics. There are various different payloads which require delivery to be used in many different parts of the body. 
And we already have identified the lead polymers that can deliver to the CNS and also the immune system. And we are currently con conducting confirmatory preclinical studies in-house. So in summary, NanoGalaxy platform has established systematic screening of the polymer system and show that we can make those polymers specific to the certain parts of the tissues. And we have demonstrated those in the CNS and the immune system. And then one of the polymer, we have shown the non-human primate translation. And we have also shown that we can deliver various different types of genetic medicine payloads. And also, this is a system reducible and manufacturable. With that, I'd like to conclude this presentation, and I want to thank you for your attention. And I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Yeah, so the, the question was either our system is able to deliver a large DNA system. So kind of I only shared like one piece of the data encapsulating nine kilobase of the mRNA. So deliver, I mean, answering in short, we can deliver various different nucleic acids. We have delivered single-stranded nucleic acid structures, and also we have delivered like double-stranded and much bigger than what AAB is able to load. That is like, yeah, like nucleus delivery was asked, and then that is a really good question, and then it requires a bit more sophisticated sophisticated investigation, so I wouldn't be able to answer. But in the most of the cell cells that we have tested in vitro, we are able to see robust delivery there. Oh, yeah. Just. Yes. We have, uh, the question was like, Either the polymer is biodegradable, and what we have done was designing the polymer system that has polyamide backbone. That's because of the earlier kind of long history of the polymer work, non-degradable polymer cause toxicity in human eventually. So the design of it is by having the polyamide backbone, after the delivery, we want this polymer to degrade. Yeah, that's a really great question. And obviously, we have done a lot of like formulation work together with the structure like evaluation. And then obviously, for many of the delivery, all different factors influence those. But all the data that we have shown today kind of was st strongly driven by the specific structure of the polymer. So for example, even using the like similar structure of the polymer making the exactly same size to what we are using, we do not see the same level of the delivery. So it is mostly driven by the structure of the polymer. That's great. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>